In this episode, we take a look into the world of trading, outfit ourselves a good ship, find some good trading routes, and make some profit. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Elite Dangerous. So as you can see here, we are fitted, or we're fitted, we have purchased ourselves a new ship once again. So I moved up to the hauler originally, and I quickly moved up to the adder, which is what this one is. The adder seems to be just a better ship all around. It's more of a multi-purpose ship, it has better drives, better everything, uh, more storage capacity and things of that nature. Uh, so yeah, so I was able to afford to upgrade to this, so I did. Let's take let's take a quick peek at the internals of this ship. Alrighty, so as you can see, I've got a few things. Um, this is my my loadout that I've started to play with for a trading vessel. Now you might be a little bit confused by the hard points, but we'll get into that in a minute. Uh, but as far as the trading ship is concerned, what I've discovered so far, and this is just my learning at the, up to this point, so your mileage ver may vary. Uh, but I, I've left the the lightweight alloys on here. I haven't upgraded. Oh, they don't even have that here. But I haven't upgraded uh, to anything uh, stronger because my idea with this ship is I want it to be light, so or light enough so that I can make some some decent jumps, as well as be quick and nimble on my feet. So to that purpose, I have outfitted myself with the best thrusters that I can have in this ship. Uh, one of the things about this ship that's nice over the hauler is that we have a lot of three sized slots, whereas the hauler had a lot of two sized slots. So that means that we get faster thrusters, uh, better frame shift drive, things of that nature. Now, obviously it is a bit heavier, uh, so that does a drag on, on, the, on the frame shift size and stuff like that, or not size, but distance. Uh, but I have gone ahead and done like the D mount or the D sized life support, the D sized sensors where I can to keep the, the weight down, right? Because the D sized are the, the lightest uh, components, but uh, best power plant I can have in here. This might have been a bit of an overkill because, as you can see, I've got 12 megawatts of power available. But when I'm deployed, I'm using a maximum of 10.25. Yeah, there we go. So we got the 3A in there. Uh, they don't have all of them here, looks like. But but yeah, so you can see here the C1 still doesn't have quite enough power, which means that we would have had to put in a a uh, a B level, and the B levels are actually the the uh, the heaviest one. So my jump range would have gone down with a B. Uh, the C one here, as you can see, is no different than the A, uh, but it has less power. So since I had the money for it, I just went with the A. So that's kind of like the the the, the trade-off that was going through my my brain when I was when I was planning this stuff out. Obviously, I wanted the fastest thrusters I could get, uh, best power distributor I can get, so that uh, I can boost as much as I possibly can when I'm trying to escape people because I'm trading, I'm not fighting. Uh, best fuel or biggest fuel tank I could get so that I don't have to refuel and I could do longer trade routes. And then I opted for putting um, into the larger slots here my cargo rack so that I have more space, right? More more trade capability. And the shield generator, I didn't go for a, like a three size shield generator like I could have because I wanted the capacity for trading. Uh, but this is enough. This is enough of a shield to you know take a couple of shots by somebody shooting at you. Um, and get away. So I kept my advanced discovery scanner as well because I jump into a bunch of systems that I don't necessarily know what is in there. And this way I can just do a quick honk and find everything that's there, which makes uh, trading a lot easier. And if you're doing missions and stuff into an area that you don't know because you can do some trade missions as well, right? Uh, that definitely helps a lot. Now let's take a look at the hard points. So what you'll see here is what I've done is on the top, on the back-ish of this, there's one medium-sized hardpoint. And I put a turreted beam laser here. So the idea with this is it's turreted, means it's automated. Like if, if there's a hostile attacking me, it'll actually target that automatically and start shooting at it. It's at the rear of the ship, which is nice on the top. So as I'm running away, this can be shooting at the bad guy as I'm trying to escape. And then I put on the bottom <laughs> uh, two small hardpoints, I put some mine launchers. So I can like drop a whole bunch of mines behind me boost away, have the beam blazer shooting at him, and then escape while dropping chaff. <laughs> so this whole build is 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 trying, is defensive, right? Uh, completely defensive. So yeah, I can be dropping mines, I can be shooting at him with my, my beam laser automatically from behind, I don't even have to take care of that. Dropping chaff when I need to, uh, and escaping. 
And the heat seek launcher is for like if I get too close to a star or if I want to actually purposely fly close to a star. So if somebody's trying to interdict me, I can put my ass towards the star and let them kind of burn up in the sun and then I can dissipate my heat and escape, right? So the all the hard points on here are defensive in nature. Now, one thing that I realized uh, too late when I was testing this out is that obviously with these things loaded, um, I have to have my hard points deployed for them to be used. And if I'm trying to jump away, I have to have my hard points retracted <laughs> to jump. So maybe the, like what I've kind of come to the conclusion of is either one, uh, get rid of them completely, which will help with my jump range and my math, right? Obviously, but, uh, and just, just go for straight running or two, when I come into a system, if somebody's after me, I quickly deploy my hard points. I, I head to the direction that I'm trying to go to while my FSD drive is cooling down. I'm dropping mines behind me. The beam laser is going. If it shoots at me, I'm dropping chaff. And as soon as my FSD drive is back online, I retract my hard points and boost and fly out of there, right? So that's kind of like the two strategies that I've been thinking when it comes to my loadout. I don't know if it's a waste to have all of that stuff on there, but... I think it's fun. So I'm going to try it out for a little bit longer and see how it goes. All right, so here, here we are at a station. Let's get into the next part of this, which is to actually uh, start trading. So we have a ship that's capable of trading. It's got, as you can see down here on the bottom, it's got 20 capacity, so 20 tons of cargo. One of the first things I do whenever I come to a station is also I go right into the bulletin board too, just to make sure that there isn't um, like a really profitable trade mission in here, uh, something that gives you uh the stuff right out of the gate too right now obviously i also am trying to rank up in my my rank with the federation so if i can pick missions that have the little federation logo that you see right here i will so it's always worth checking this out and seeing if there's anything good in here so the next thing that we, we need to do obviously if we're trading is we want to go into the commodities market and the whole idea behind trading is you know buy low sell high right now, one of the things you have in this, this little uh, commodities market has a lot more information in it than I realized for a while. But one of the things to, to notice here is supply and demand, right? So you see here, it's got uh, how much supply does this station have and how much is this item in demand at this station? So what I see here is if a station has a really big supply in something, that means that they probably don't want it very much, which also means that they're probably uh, willing to sell it at a lower cost because they have so much of it, right? So one trick that you can do, and I've, I've, a lot of the stuff I learned uh, just by reading Reddit articles and, and uh, you know, Google searching and watching videos here and there or whatever. But I'll try to summarize it for you as quick as I can in this video. <laughs> uh, so, but yeah, here we are. Uh, this one here has a huge uh, supply of auto fabricators. So there's a good potential that this stuff is actually cheaper here than it will be at other places because they have so much of it. Now, one really cool thing that you can do here now is to say, okay, you found something with a high supply. I want to load my cargo up on auto fabricators, but now where do I sell it? How do I know where to go? Now, there's a lot of tools for this. First one I'm going to show you is purely in system. So if I bring up the good old big galaxy, then here we are. We are currently in Onlave, right? It's a high-tech system, which is good. And it's a high-population high-tech system. If you look here, it's a high-tech extraction system with a 4 billion population. So this is actually a really good system to trade from as well. Like having high-tech and um, high-population systems is really good for trade. Again, something I've just learned by reading a few things. Um, what we want to do now is we want to go into this map view here. Let's zoom out a little bit. And here's all the systems we have around. One thing you can do to kind of clean up this screen a little bit so that there's not so many lines going everywhere. So if you go back over to here, you can actually just unclick all of these, right? And then you, and then they're, all of those trade or all of those FSD lines are gone. And then you can come and click on these later just uh, when, you, when you're actually plotting your route and turn them back on. Now, what we want to do in here is we want to find out who this system is going to trade with, right? So we come down here to show trade routes. We flip that on and boom, <laughs> there is a million lines going in all which way directions. Now we wanna know which ones are trading, like if I buy those auto fabricators from here, who can I sell them to? 
So if we look down in here, I think, were they in technology, auto fabricators? They are, right? So what we can do is we can actually just say, turn all of these off, go into technology, find the auto fabricators, turn just those on. Now we can see this system trades with the systems where these lines go to with auto fabricators. So now we know where, where we can go. Now the next bit of information that is really important is if you look at the lines, you'll see these pulses, right? Now in this case, they're all pulsing away from Onlave, right? And going to other systems. That means that these, this system actually trades those auto fabricators from here to these other systems. So if you buy auto fabricators here, you can sell them in LHS, in LFT, in OTA, and in Ipsum, right? We can actually sell them at all of those different places. Uh, so that's a good deal, right? Now, the next thing that we should do is just try and take a quick look at the information for these systems. Um, so it's industrial refinery, right? So they, they obviously want this technology because they're using them, they're utilizing them. That's one thing to take a look at too, is the economy types, right? You can actually start to sort of see a pattern in what, who sells what and who buys what from what systems by, by noticing these types of things, right? So if we look at a system here, the closest station is 2000 light seconds away. So it'll actually take you a little bit of time to fly out there to sell these things, right? So if I head back to the system app, so that was this one out here that we just tried. So if we go to this one in here now, so you see this one here? This guy is 59 light seconds away. It looks like a pretty decent location to try and sell these at. So if I mark this here, uh, you'll see also if we look at the information, right? It'll tell you over here as well that this is an actually a refinery industry, um, refinery and industrial station. There could be other stations in here that aren't that, right? These ones happen to be, so you're, you're fine, but you should definitely take a look at that and make sure that it is um, the type of thing that you want it to be. So now we're gonna fly from here to there one jump so we should be able to load up on auto fabricators many as we can carry it's going to cost me 65,000 almost 67 or 65 almost 66,000 credits we load up our cargo hold all right and then we can see over here 20 of 20 loaded into our cargo and off we go all right, so we've arrived at Teller Ring. And like I said, normally what I do is, first thing I do is I will show up and I will load up the bulletin board because there might actually be some missions that need auto fabricators. And instead of just selling them for normal commodity prices, you might as well check here and just see if they need them, right? So we look in here, they want us to deliver some, some uranite. Uh, we do not have any of that on us, so we are not going to bother with this. So, but yeah, it's always worth taking a look because the missions will actually normally give you a much higher profit than uh, just trading outright, normally, from what I understand. Could be wrong on that, but it's worth looking anyway. Uh, so now if we go into the market here, let's go find, there we go, auto fabricators. How much will they sell for here? All right, so we made an easy 13,000 credits profit from doing a one system jump run that was very close to the star, right? Boom, there we go. Uh, so that's one way of doing trades. Now you can do the same thing again here, right? Now you're at the next station, you can take a look through here, you can see you know, what is the highest supply item that they have here, All right? So right now it looks like power generators. And you do the same thing we did the last one. Now, where we come back into here, we take a look, we say, hey, I only want to see power generators. And now from here, we would look and, and do the same thing. Like, so here you can see that the, the lines are going towards this system, so we could actually buy them here, sell them there. Here's an example of where, from here, they actually, you can buy them here and sell them where we are. So if we bought them here, we could not sell them over here because this little line is going this way. So that's using only the system map to, to discover what, you're, what you need to buy, right? The other way um, that you can go about doing this that still keeps you in game, but is using a bit of a third party tool is this other tool that I've been using, right? So I, I'll bring it up here on the screen now. You can see uh, this little HUD that pops up over top. Now this is the Trade Computer Extension Mark II. Um, I will have, there's a link for it in the description if you're interested. But what this allows you to do is at every station that you land at, right? You add, um, you add those markets to your database, right? So I've already added this one uh, that, we, that we're at right now into this database. 
and it'll actually connect to the API of the game and it'll download the entire uh, commodities market. So if I say here, view prices, right? So this is everything that this system sells. Uh, if we go compact, it only shows you the ones that are actually here, but it shows you all the data about what they sell here. And what you can do, it's pretty powerful, is once you have been around to a bunch of different stations, you can actually just pull up this trade button here, right? And what this is gonna do is it's gonna tell me uh, from where I am right now, right, in Teller's Ring, as you can see over here, um, what is the best trade that I can make from here, highest profit trade I can make from here to something else in my system that I know about, right, from all the places I've been to. Uh, so it'll, it's saying right now, if I buy geological equipment from Teller's Ring uh, at a price of 1,500 credits, I can make a profit of 391 credits per unit uh, and sell them here at this place, right? And, it, and there's all the different trades that I can make. Now, 391 credits profit per unit isn't the greatest. Um, I, I, I've So far, I've been able to find stuff around 1,000 credits uh, profit so far using this method, and that's definitely kind of what I'm looking for. Uh, so, so here you can see, oh, this isn't the greatest trade that I can do, right? But uh, one thing you can do, let's say, another use for this too, is let's say you do a mission um, where you have to go out and find, there's some of those multi-part missions where you have to say like, I need, you know, food, uh, you need to bring me food or, or whatever, that kind of stuff. One cool thing about this is just like, okay, well, where do, where do I find food, right? I can just go into here and I can find, let's say animal meat was what I was looking for. I want the best, uh, the best buy for that, right? And it'll tell me, okay, well, the best price you can get for that is here. And it is um, 85 light years away. And you're like, oh, wow, that's really far away. Well, why don't I sort by distance then? I'm willing to pay a little bit more, uh, but the closest, so I can go now to, the, you know, to this place here. And if I click on it, it actually shows me the, the, the trades I can make to this market as well, which is really cool. So let's say, you know, you have to go and get food and deliver it for a mission. Um, it's also going to tell you, well, you might as well take something with you, right? While you're going there, make a little bit of money. So I can bring clothing from the station I'm at, sell it at, uh, lack off city, then I can pick up the food I need to finish the mission, right? And so it's really helpful from that point of view. I really like it. Uh, one of the other powerful things in here is it's like, you don't like this trade. I want to do something else. So one of the things you can do that's really cool in this system is if you come up here to the routes, you can do this route finder. Now, what this is going to do is you can put in some information like, uh, I'm only, I'm willing to go a thousand light years away. I want the markets. Oh, the search radius, sorry, is a thousand light years around me. Um, I want the markets that I'm going to to be 25 light years away and only a thousand light seconds from their star. I can tell it, you know, what, um, you know, I don't want to go to anarchy systems or I do or whatever, uh, what size of pad I need, right? Because if you have a large ship, you can only go to ones that have that. And then how much, you know, profit and all that kind of stuff I want. And also this is important too, like how much stock you have available on your ship. Then you can say search. And it's going to go out and look for some of the best um, uh, routes that you can find, right? So in here, we've got a pretty decent looking route where we say we go from Chadwick Port, uh, we can buy resonating separators, and we're going to make $1,000 or almost almost 1,100 um, credits profit on each of those sale. And then we want, so if you click on this here, and then it also tells you the return, right? So we're, we'll actually make 849 credits on return. With a, for a total of almost 2,000 credits for this trade route. So go, you're basically going back and forth between these two different stations. We can make almost 2,000 credits uh, selling resonant, resonating separators at one station and then picking up gold and selling them back at the original station. And then we can preview this trade route and it'll actually show you here, you know, the station you're coming from, the station you're going to, what you're selling, um, and you can see what other trades are available there as well, right? And then it also has this uh, start trade route, which is pretty cool. And what it does is it actually updates these things up here. So you can see here it's saying, right now here it's saying it's directing. So it, it's directing you from where you are to here, right, where you're going. Again, you could use this trade information here to say, okay, well, I'm going here from where I am. I should bring some computer components with me and sell them for almost, or sell them for 172 profits per credit, or per credit, uh, 172 credits of profit per unit. Um, at this port, right? So I'll pick those up here. I'll go over to this port, I'll sell them. And then once I get there, it'll, this will update and tell you, okay, so now you're here, that'll flip over to here. It'll tell you what you need to buy when uh, down underneath here um, and tell you where you're going. Um, and then you can turn, there's a hotkey too to like flip this on and off. So if you don't want it on your HUD, you can totally do that. So this tool is has been really useful and I really like it and it keeps you in game and it kind of augments using the, the map here as well. So that's super cool. 
Um, one of the other kind of uh, ways you can then go about this, if you want, if you're okay with like leaving the game and and kind of coming out of the immersion of this game, what you can do is you can use tools like this. So here you see is the eddb.io uh, website, and this is like a crowdsource website for a bunch of people. Um, in the Elite Dangerous Universe that are updating this with a whole bunch of information. So if you do use a system like this, you should definitely contribute and add your own, like every station you go to, you should add, you know, you should update this database with the uh, with the information. Uh, and then there's other sites, right? Like, so this is one, definitely one that I've, I've used before just to kind of see how things work. Um, another one that I've come across that's actually really useful, Elite Trading Tool. Uh, so this is the Elite Trading Tool. The other one was the EDDB uh, dot io. Uh, so there's all different ways of finding like good trade routes. Now I'm I'm myself I'm really enjoying just using the in-game system like this, uh, finding my routes as well as using uh, using this system up here. And that's what I've learned about trading so far, right? Yeah, and and it's worked out quite well for me. I've been making a bit of a little bit of profit on this. So one last little I guess tip that might be useful for you guys before we wrap this up is if you're let's say you know you want to go say back to you want to go. So I'm here and say, say I want to go back to this onlave place and I want to go to a different port there and I'm using this thing here right so let's say I don't have that port in here so I can't tell what I want to bring there um, you can do the reverse in the galaxy map as well right so if I'm here obviously those online tools will definitely help you with this but if you want to use the galaxy map to do this right you can actually just kind of slowly uh, let's say let's let's turn off all the trade data right and then you can flip on and you can see like, oh, look, so we could actually sell some metals from here to there. Right? You can kind of just flip these things on and see. So this one here, materials goes the other way. Um, looks like you can also sell chemicals, right? Uh, so, you know, like, hey, if I go into like metals and then look at what metals do they want, I can turn all of these off. I think it's palladium, which is like one of the best, best ones to sell. But it looks like they don't sell that back there, right? But yeah, you can just kind of go look, flipping through and see what metal they want from this system so you know what to to sell there when you go back so according to this uh, they do uh, export computer components uh, from this system to the system i'm going to right so now if i come back out here you can see so you just have to it does a little bit of work to kind of make sure that you find uh find the right item and they uh so here you go they sell computer components so it's, it's a decent uh supply right so i'll buy a bunch of these and i'll head on back to the system that i was going to so that's what I've learned about trading so far in a nutshell. Uh, all the different tools that you can use in this game, both in and outside of the game. And a question out to all of you guys, like I've shown you how I do trading and the way that I look for a profit. Uh, do you guys have any other really cool ways or any ways that you've discovered uh, finding really good profitable trade routes? Uh, ones that both keep you immersed and ones that maybe uh, just help you make a lot of money. Uh, I would love to hear them. So put those down in the comments. Thank you so much. I hope that this was helpful for you in some way, as well as uh, it's been fun for me to kind of uh, show you how this all works. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please feel free to hit that like button. It really does help out my channel quite a bit. Uh, if you're new to my channel and you want to know when I release more videos, just hit that subscribe button. I release Elite Dangerous videos on Wednesdays, as well as I do some Elite Dangerous live streams on Thursday and Monday. If you like space games, you might also be interested in my Space Engineers videos. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching. Have an absolute great one, and I'll see you next time.